Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And this is not going to be one of those happy-go-lucky videos. This is one that absolutely hits me in the heart. And I wanted to come on here and talk about this. Let me start with this. I want to go over a little bit of a background of some of the worst events in my life when it comes to crypto. For those who do not know, back a few years ago, I was working full time teaching and after school, I would come back and I was into the crypto space, man. I had miners all over the house. I was just getting a ton of crypto and I did this for a very long time. We're talking day one of the Dogecoin when that came out. I had so many miners. I was getting 100 to 200,000 Dogecoin daily. And remember, this was up at 60 something cents at one point. That would equate to over $100,000 worth of Dogecoin if it was at that price back then. It was not. I wish it was. We'd all be retired on an island right now. But I saved all that crypto. I would transfer it into the uh, other coins, most of it Bitcoin, kept a lot of altcoins as well. And I did this for about a year, if not over that. And one day I woke up. And I went to the platform to check and actually take some out finally. I was like, man, Bitcoin's going through the roof. And it was. And it was gone. It was locked down. The entire platform was locked down. Everything, all my investments, everything I did, I paid so much money to get the equipment to build it and then to run it, the power, the electricity. And it was stolen from me. And of course, that absolutely crushed me. And I am now seeing a repeat of this on platforms now in the crypto space. You know what I'm talking about. We got FTX out there. And I remember Mt. Gox way back in the day. I think it was 2014. I had no exposure, but everyone was affected. Prices got absolutely slammed. And I think we're eight years later. They are still trying to figure out I think they're finally starting to get ready for payments and stuff, I believe. Help me out in the comments if you know, if you're a part of any of this. Now we're at FTX. I did a video yesterday on the latest details with FTX. What we're hearing is that there could be a million creditors in the bankruptcy filing. This is, it's insane. And we don't know the, what's going on with this. Is this the next Bernie Madoff? How bad is this going to be? All I can tell you is, I know a lot of people out there are going to absolutely get crushed because with the Mt. Gox from 2014, it's taking them eight years for people to finally get some of their money back. Most people will get a little bit back, I believe. I don't think anybody's going to get all their money back. And that's how it usually works in bankruptcies. So we're watching FTX go through this in slow motion. I think a lot of people that had all their currencies on there and everything else. Well, they're feeling that same pain in their stomach that I did way back then when everything I worked for for years was taken away from me. And now, and for those who know, I know a lot of people who have not been following. Hey, Mo, did you work with FTX? I did not. They reached out to me. They offered me a huge amount of money. And I declined to be a part of that. I was happy with the partnerships I was in. And I thought everything was going fine. And of course, for those who are on the channel, you know who I work with. I work with Coinbase, Weeble, I work with Moomoo, and who else? Gemini, and I worked with BlockFi. So they were the ones that I work with. That leads us up to this little stunning piece of information that came out today. I know a lot of people have been following. BlockFi prepares for potential bankruptcy as crypto contagion spreads. So unfortunately, we're at a point now where we might have to take a big time loss or not get some of our funds back for years. And that kills me because I was an affiliate for them. I was not a paid sponsor. I was not, I didn't do integrations. I love their credit card. I liked their platform with some of the interest rates. I've talked about that. It was good. I went, I did my due diligence. That's the thing. I think people think, hey, they just throw money. I get 10 to 20 offers daily to do products, different platforms, cryptos. I am so selective and I try to do the best I can. And from the bottom of my heart, I absolutely mean that. And I sat down with their management team years ago when I first got involved with them. 
I went through everything, asked all the questions, thought I was doing everything that I needed to do. I went out and did research then. I wanted to see what other big companies out there in their reviews and everything else. And at the end of the day, I came up with the conclusion that this seemed like a very reputable and solid company. And I was not alone with this. You can see that Business Insider, Benzinga, you got Bankrate, CNBC, CNET, Forbes, Investopedia, The Motley Fool, you got Nerd Wallet, you got the Wall Street Journal talking about it, and they have their partnership thing here all together. We did the research. I'm sure they did too. You talk to their management team and you do the best you can, but they're going bankrupt. So I am here to absolutely tell you I'm sorry. I feel absolutely horrible uh, about a company that I dealt with going bankrupt. You have faith in the management. You believe they're going to do what's best for everyone. And at the end of the day, it did not happen. The FTX, like I said, it is affecting a lot of different companies. And for some of them, they're not going to make it. And at that point, people are asking me, what do we do with our crypto? I will say this. One of the safest things we can do is keep it in a cold wallet. That's it. That's the safest you're going to get. No one has access to it. You can use a ledger. You can write down security codes. You can take those precautions. I have my crypto, part of it, on a ledger. I have the majority in Coinbase. I have some over at Gemini. I have some on Robinhood even. I have some over at Weeble even. And so I have those there, all right? And if they go out, that would be big. It, the big one for me is Coinbase. That's where I got my Ethereum stake. And that's, I still trust them. I like the fact that they have SEC, you know, they're listed on the exchanges. There's oversight in that way. I'm hoping FINRA and the SEC are being a little bit more proactive. That's the reason I like that. And so, because people always ask, why don't you stake somewhere else? You get more, you get more. And that's always the million dollar question. How can they pay more? And so sometimes I thought in my own head, I'd rather go with what I think is more secure. And so I do like Coinbase for the staking because I know there's some other places you could stake. I kept some on BlockFi for the interest and that's going to end up burning me. So at that point, my investment is gone with BlockFi. We'll see if I get some back in, in bankruptcy. But uh, we also know that the credit card, and for those following along right here, you can see that you have, uh, what is it, Curb bids for the 87,000 credit card customers. I'm actually surprised. I thought there was a lot more credit card customers. There is not. So there's only 87,000. And for all of us who are members of this, we are going to have to sit back and wait and see what happens with that. I believe that they will sell off that part and we'll see what that is worth and how they divvy up that money in bankruptcy court if they go bankrupt. And we're just going to have to sit back and see how it goes. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and leave my crypto in the exchanges I told you about. I have some there. It doesn't mean it's guaranteed just because I'm keeping it there. The truth of the matter is, you don't know. Coinbase, Gemini, like I said, uh, Robinhood, I have some in there. And Weeble, I have some in there. And I'm going to leave them in there. I believe they're going to be okay. But there's definitely no guarantees. They all say it's going to be okay. BlockFi. FTX, they used to come out, oh, we're good. And now we know that doesn't mean what it used to mean. And so at this particular moment in time, the safest thing we can do is move it into a cold wallet. You can move it into, you know, like I said, not your keys, not your coins. All right. So you got to be careful with that. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a rough day in the crypto world. And I am absolutely sorry for anything that has happened to anybody because of BlockFi. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get out there and make some money.